So contrary to a lot of other people, I have never bulked in my life. Yet, I was able to gain 20 pounds of muscle in my first two years of lifting, as well as continuously improve my physique over the past eight years now. So here is a video on how I was able to build muscle without bulking. Also, I'm gonna be doing this over some B-roll of my last upper body day. So if you're interested in my workout programs and coaching, check the link in bio. I wanna preface this by saying that the reason why I never bulked in the first place was I didn't feel the need to, right? It was always my goal for me that I wanted to stay lean and aesthetic. And at the time I was running track and field, so I definitely wanted to keep my like, speed up, right, for that. So I just really never felt the need to bulk. And not saying that all bulking is like unhealthy or anything, but repeated bulking slash cutting cycles that like, you know, bodybuilders and stuff do are definitely not the most healthy way to be going about your diet. And for me, I always just prioritize my health above everything else, right? So if your goals are similar to mine, here's how to build muscle without bulking. Okay, so starting off with the fitness related stuff first, consistency. Consistency at the end of the day will be the most important factor in building muscle long term. And I will say that the number one thing you should be focusing on doing, especially as a new lifter, is training consistently. Yet, if you notice, this is the most common problem people have. How many people do you personally even know that you know used to, used to work out and then fell off the routine and then come back on? And a big reason people can't stick to a routine is because people tend to overcommit to their fitness goals, right? Like how many times do you hear, oh, if you wanna build muscle, you gotta bulk, you gotta buy these supplements, you gotta live six days per week, like slow down, bro. I always tell new lifters, the number one thing you should be focusing on in your first year is just consistently getting yourself into the gym and working out. Now studies show that it takes 59 to 70 days to build a habit. Forget that dude. I've seen way too many people work out consistently, especially high schoolers or college students. They work out consistently for a few months and then once school starts, once other obligations kind of come up, they just fall off. And that's why I don't recommend new lifters like track calories, bulk, cut, try to figure these other stuff out because like keep it simple. Just try to be consistent first, right? That's hard enough for a lot of people. Second thing I wanna talk about is training hard. Applying progressive overload. Training within proximity to failure. You need to be pushing yourself in the gym for you to actually see results long term. Now, I'm not saying you should train to failure every set. Like, you're just gonna fatigue yourself and risk injury. And I always recommend train within an RIR of three, okay? If you're not familiar with RIR, it means reps in reserve. Another way to think about it is how many reps did you have left in the tank? And then when it comes to training to failure, I would recommend you occasionally train to failure on your last set, maybe like once per week. And this is a surprise to a lot of people. It was a surprise to me when I heard about it. Like you would think, you know, the harder you train, you got to train to failure every single set, the more results you're going to get. But it shows that, you know, training within proximity to failure, a couple reps shy is actually better than training to failure itself. Now, third thing I want to talk about is lifting with intent, mainly concerning the tempo of your lift. So many of y'all lifters are just focused on getting that set done, right? Just moving the weight. How fast can I get through this set? Lifting with intention generally means slowing the tempo down, especially on the eccentric portion of the lift. Now, look at how I'm performing every single exercise in this workout. Look how mindful I am of the eccentric part of the lift. I'm not just, you know, going through the concentric and then just dropping the weight. No, I'm controlling everything. Now you might be thinking, okay, slowing the eccentric is a great idea, but should I also be slowing down the concentric part? That I would say no, right? Like I don't think you're gonna benefit from putting a tempo on the concentric. Basically, if you're thinking about tempo, like four second tempo, that sort of thing, just focus on the eccentric part. And yeah, from a workout perspective, just focus on these three things and you're gonna be in pretty good shape. All right, so now move on to the juicy part, diet. Now, the big basic concept is this. First thing, most people looking to build muscle without bulking probably don't wanna count calories. Second thing, because you're not tracking, you're you know relying on intuitive eating, which I can't believe there's an actual word for this, but intuitive eating is basically yeah, like eating without tracking calories like most people. And the third thing is it is nearly impossible for you to be exactly at maintenance, okay? So notice how I don't really explain this as main gaining because when you intuitively eat, there will be some days you're naturally at a surplus, there'll be other days you're at a deficit. 
like are you really main gaining at that point maybe it's long term like i guess from a long-term perspective you are but don't think of it as necessarily you're sticking at maintenance right it's more like you're intuitively eating some days you're at a surplus some days you're at a deficit and your body composition stays tends to stay the same your body fat tends to stay the same now you might be thinking if i'm in a calorie surplus then i'm bulking not necessarily here's why the big difference here is an acute calorie surplus does not mean you're lean bulking because a lean bulk implies that you're consistently eating at a surplus every day for a set period of time but here again if you're eating around your maintenance level some days you're gonna be at a surplus some days you're gonna be at a deficit now that's essentially my approach to nutrition i intuitively eat some days i'm at a surplus some days i'm at a deficit long term i'm roughly around my maintenance consistently so with that in mind i recommend you focus on eating a high protein diet as well as incorporating a lot of vegetables into your diet here's why on the protein side i want to say that most people tend to overestimate the amount of protein they actually need to eat this is you know partly because of the supplement industry but the truth is if you're not cutting like you don't really need all that much protein okay if you're eating around your maintenance level i recommend roughly like 0.8 grams per pound of body weight if you are in a calorie deficit then yeah you would bump it up to around like the one gram per pound of body weight essentially increasing your protein intake when you're cutting helps to retain as much muscle as possible now when it comes to vegetables the reason why i put vegetables on such a pedestal is they are going to be insanely helpful for you to stay around your maintenance level or be at a slight deficit when you're intuitively eating because they're so low in calories and high in volume and fiber okay if you're the type of person that has a big appetite eating a lot of vegetables will help you kind of curb that amount make you feel like you're eating a lot more than you actually are from a calorie perspective not to mention that vegetables are just packed full of micronutrients that will help you like improve your mood help improve your energy maybe even increase the performance of your workouts and then if you like snacking then i recommend you eat a lot of low calorie but delicious stuff so this includes fruits or like high protein snacks that are pretty good like jerky or greek yogurt you can do a lot of stuff with protein powder if you find one that tastes pretty good the one i recommend is my proteins way forward it's animal free 20 grams of protein only 100 calories pretty solid choice and that's pretty much it from a diet perspective so moving on to sleep i'm gonna tell you this poor sleep will negate your efforts all the effort you're putting in will be hindered if you can't get seven to eight hours of sleep consistently on a daily basis personally for me i feel terrible on not a lot of sleep so this is a non-negotiable for me the last thing i'm gonna talk about is more of like a mindset thing but you need to have like a long-term outlook on things now because you're not bulking you're not gonna be gaining weight quickly in fact you might be losing weight if you're doing a body recomp and you're at a higher body fat percentage but keep in mind gaining weight fast is not necessarily a good thing it's not like all that weight is going to be muscle remember that a lot of the weight gain bulkers see is not just muscle it's also fat water food in their digestive system etc so what i recommend you do is take progress photos consistently let's say on a weekly basis at the same spot every single week take a progress photo of your front back and side now this is something i wish i did more when i first started man like i wish i had more progress photos so i can make like nice body transformation videos like dave laid and everyone else but you know i just i didn't take a lot of progress photos back in the day and understand this as we're going through your fitness journey that there's two important factors that go into an aesthetic physique first is muscle and second is having a lower body fat percentage okay so always staying in a healthy body fat percentage is a good idea and will help with aesthetics but yeah that's pretty much how i built muscle without bulking um the key thing i want to also remind you is that like once you get to your goal it's not like you stop training so ultimately what's the rush to actually get to your dream physique okay do things the healthy way stay away from performance enhancing drugs and just prioritize your health over other things and ultimately that's the number one thing i recommend for all y'all to do take care of your health first a lot of people initially get into things for their health but then you know they get they get trapped in the social media cycle of seeing all these really like you know enhanced people and these nice physiques all these genetic anomalies and they start comparing themselves but leads to body dysmorphia and I, this is a whole another rabbit hole that i can talk about like how i can personally overcame body dysmorphia 
with that said hope y'all enjoyed this video let me know if you guys like these long form youtube videos i know a lot of you guys are coming from tiktok and instagram which is where most of my following is i hope to make more videos in the future on youtube maybe i'll do some like gym vlogs where i'm actually like talking while i'm working out or showing y'all what i like to eat around chicago that sort of thing but yeah like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and i'll see y'all next one peace